as we know there are different types or types of central limit theorems that means some theorems that actually ensures the uh, convergence in distribution uh, one such theorem is lindberg levy theorem and we also know lyapunov's clt today we will discuss one more such theorem one another such theorem which is known as a lindberg feller clt so lindberg feller clt is basically based on some assumptions and these assumptions actually are only up to the existence of up to the second order moment so as we have already seen that lyapunov clt requires existence of moments slightly higher than second order but lindberg and feller is in that sense slightly weaker uh, in the sense that it requires uh, not really very higher order existence of not very higher order moments so uh, we will show we will actually discuss the proof in detail about this clt although and initially we will start with the mention we we'll, with a mention of uh, previous other two theorems namely uh, lindberg levy theorem and uh, lyapunov's clt we are discussing some more theorems on central limit theorems or convergence in this that deals with convergence in distributions Uh, first one we have already shown previously the lindberg levy theorem which deals with the sequence of iid random variables under the existence of second order moment then we know there is another theorem central limit theorem known as lyapunov's clt which says that if xn is a sequence of independent random variables such that expectation of xk equals to 0 expectation of xk square equals to sigma k square less than infinity and we define small sn as summation sigma k square k equals to 1 to n and we assume that the existence of slightly higher order moments slightly moments of slightly higher than 2 which is summation k equals to 1 to n expectation of mod xk to the power 2 plus delta by sn to the power 2 plus delta this goes to 0 that means this is known as lyapunov's condition for 0 less than delta less than equals to 1 then capital sn that is the sum of random variables sum of xi is x1 x2 xn by sn converges in distribution to tau where tau follows normal 0 1 as n goes to infinity now one important thing is that lyapunov clt requires moments of higher order than those figured in the formulation in the, of the problem in the in the formulation of the problem uh, we see that sigma is there but it requires existence of moments of higher of order higher than the second one that is higher than sigma square so lindberg in 1928 proved another clt for independent random variables for which lyapunov's condition of finiteness of more than second order moments is not really necessary there is another slightly weaker condition for this filler in 1936 proved that lindberg's condition is also necessary and for clt and for negligibility of individual contribution of variance of the random variables corresponding to the total variance that means this lindberg's condition is necessary and it will ensure that the contribution individual contribution or the contribution of the variance for individual variables is really small compared to the total variance So let us prove uh, Lindberg Feller theorem. Here also we assume that Xn is a sequence of independent random variables only, and we are not assuming that they are identically distributed. So under the assumption of only independence, we also assume that expectation of Xk equals to zero, expectation of Xk square equals to sigma k square less than infinity, and sn equals to variance of capital sn which is equals to summation k equals to 1 to n sigma k square under this then capital sn there is a sum of random variables x1 x2 xn divided by small sn converges in distribution to tau and maximum over k k lies between 1 and n of sigma k by sn this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 and and fk being the distribution function of xk if we have 
g n epsilon which is a, which is s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n integration over mod, mod x k mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n x square d f k this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. That means we are defining a function that depends on epsilon and obviously on each of the distribution function that means distribution function of each of the random variables this function with this particular function goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and this is a necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of this particular this CLT or this type of convergence of Sn by small Sn. A couple of important notes that condition 1 is called Fellers condition and condition 2 is called Lindbergh's condition. Uh, condition 2 is called Lindbergh's condition and g n epsilon is called Lindbergh's function. Now, if we define g n star epsilon which is s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n integration mod x less than epsilon s n. Now, remember previously in g n epsilon this quantity this set on which we are considering the integral is mod of x greater than equals to epsilon s n. Now, we are just taking the complement of this set and of, uh, over this set we are considering the integral of x square d f with respect to f k this quantity that means g n epsilon star goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. In fact, this is equivalent to the condition 2. So, let us consider the uh, proof. First, we will show that Lindbergh's condition implies Fellers condition. Let us start with sigma square as we know that uh, sigma k square which is variance of x k always plays a very important role in most of the central limit theorems. So, sigma k square equals to integration x square over with respect to f k that is d f k because expectation of x k is 0 for every k we have assumed that. Now, we split the integral into two different sets one is complement of the other that is integral over mod x less than epsilon s n x square d f k plus integral over mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n x square d f k. Now, if we replace mod x by epsilon s n the first integral is less than equals to epsilon square s n square and the second let us let us consider let us keep second as it is. Then if we consider sigma k square by s n square and take maximum over k, k lies between 1 and n we can immediately write this is less than equals to epsilon square plus s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n integral over mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n x square d f k. Now, the left side in the inequality is nothing but Fellers condition and the second term in the right side is basically Lindbergh's condition. Since we have assumed that Lindbergh's condition holds true then the second term goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and epsilon is arbitrary. So, Fellers condition is satisfied. Now, consider epsilon greater than 0 and g n epsilon greater than g n epsilon goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, it is that means we are assuming that Lindbergh's condition uh, holds true now. So, it is possible to choose epsilon n a sequence of epsilon n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity such that epsilon n to the power minus 2 g n epsilon n goes to 0 and epsilon n to the power minus 1 g n epsilon n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. A again define a new random variable denoted by uh, x n k which is equals to x k into indicator function over mod x less than epsilon n s n and we define s n n in terms of x n k that is s n n is summation k equals to 1 to n x n k. Then consider the probability that s n n by small s n not equals to s n by small s n which is naturally less than equals to summation k equals to 1 to n probability x n k not equals to x k which is equals to we can immediately see which is equals to summation k equals to 1 to n integral over mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n. 
because as long as mod x less than epsilon in Sn, xk and x in nk are equal, that is by the definition of x nk. So, on the set mod x greater than epsilon in Sn, these two differs. So, we are considering integral only on this set. Now, again this quantity is less than equals to uh, epsilon n Sn to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n integral mod x greater than equals to epsilon n Sn x square dfk just by simple algebra uh, which is equals to epsilon n to the power minus 2 into g n epsilon n that is by the definition of g n epsilon n and naturally this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, what we get here is that probability s n n by small s n not equals to s n by small s n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. This immediately implies that s n n by small s n and s n by small s n are tail equivalent and hence they have the same limit in law as n goes to infinity. So, in order to show that s n by small s n goes to tau in distribution it is enough to show that s n n by small s n goes to tau in distribution. Uh, so, note that s small s n n square equals to variance of capital S n n and we, we know that expectation of x k equals to 0. So, we naturally have 0 less than equals to 1 minus s n n small s n n square by small s n square which is equals to variance of capital S n minus summation k equals to 1 to n expectation of x n k square minus expectation square of n x n k divided by entire thing is divided by small s n square which is equals to oh, s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n expectation of x k square minus uh, expectation of x n k square plus s n to the power minus 2 into summation k equals to 1 to n expectation square of x n k. So, we are just uh, um, doing little bit of algebra here which is equals to s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n integral mod x greater than equals to epsilon n s n x square d f k plus s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n expectation square of x n k. Now, the first term is nothing but g n epsilon and second term is applying the definition of x n k which is defined over the set mod x greater than equals to epsilon n s n. The second term is s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n modulus of integral mod x greater than equals to epsilon n s n x d f k square which is equals to which is less than equals to g n epsilon n plus s n to the power minus 2 summation k equals to 1 to n integral mod x greater than equals to epsilon n s n x square d f k and again this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, here we have that small s n n bar by small s n goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. So, therefore, uh, so initially we are trying to prove that capital S n n by small s n goes to tau in distribution. Now, we have shown that small s n n by small s n goes to 1 as goes to infinity. So, naturally it is enough to show that capital S n n by small s n n goes to tau in distribution. And again since we know Lyapunov of CLT we will just show that Lyapunov's condition is satisfied in this case and then we are through because we can directly apply Lyapunov's of CLT. Now note that modulus of x n k minus expectation of x n k is less than equals to 2 epsilon n s n. Now as epsilon n goes to 0 s n n to the power minus 3 summation k equals to 1 to n expectation of mod x n k minus expectation of x n k modulus of the entire quantity whole to the power 3 which is less than equals to 2 epsilon n s n into s n n to the power minus 3 summation k equals to 1 to n expectation of x n k minus expectation of x n k whole square. 
just by doing a little bit of algebra, we can immediately show that this quantity is less than equals to 2 epsilon n Sn into Snn to the power minus 1, which goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. And so we have the proof because the Lyapunov's condition is satisfied. So we just apply Lyapunov's CLT and the proof follows immediately. Now we have to show Phyllis condition imply and CLT implies Lindbergh's condition. Uh, we know that characteristic if we consider the characteristic function, then we know that modulus of phi k t by S n minus 1 is modulus of this quantity less than equals to t square by 2 into sigma k square S n to the power minus 2. And Phyllis condition implies that maximum over k, k lies between 1 and n, modulus of phi k t by S n minus 1 goes to 0 because maximum over sigma k square by S n square goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Also summation k equals to 1 to n modulus of phi k t by S n minus 1 whole square less than equals to just take one term outside maximum over k lies between 1 and n modulus of phi k t by S n minus 1 into summation k equals to 1 to n modulus of phi k t by S n minus 1. And doing again little bit of algebra, we can show that this entire quantity is less than equals to t to the power 4 by 4 into maximum over k lies between 1 and n, maximum of sigma k by S n square and by Phyllis condition this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So by equation 3, we can immediately write that modulus of phi k t by S n minus 1 is less than delta. Uh, for n greater than equals to n naught, n naught is very large and k less than equals to n. Hence, uh, using all the arguments we have just discussed here, we have summation k equals to 1 to n modulus of log of phi k t by s n minus phi k t by s n minus 1 less than equals to summation k equals to 1 to n modulus of phi k t by s n minus 1 square, which is equals to small o of 1. Just now we have shown this by Ferrer's condition, this goes to 0. So, as, as n tends to infinity. So, we, we also know that CLT holds. So, what is the meaning that CLT holds? That means product k equals to 1 to n phi k t by x n goes to e to the power minus t square by 2. So, if we take log on both sides, we, we see that summation k equals to 1 to n log of phi k t by s n goes to minus t square by 2. So, it is immediate that minus t square by 2 is nothing but summation k equals to 1 to n phi k t by s n minus 1 plus small of 1. Let us call it equation 4. Now, we again do standard algebra, uh, just equate real parts on both sides of equation 4 uh, and doing little bit of manipulation, we get that the last one that is summation k equals to 1 to n integral mod x less than epsilon s n into 1 minus epsilon s n of integral of 1 minus cos t x by s n d f k. Here also we have applied that particular technique that splitting a particular set into two sets, one is the complement of the other. And doing little bit of manipulation, we have uh, this quantity that half t squared g n epsilon plus small o of 1, that means the second term goes to 0, less than equals to summation k equals to 1 to n integral over mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n of 1 minus cos t x by s n d f k. This entire quantity is less than equals to 2 into summation k equals to 1 to n integral of mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n d f k that is less than equals to twice epsilon s n to the power minus 2 into summation k equals to 1 to n integral of x square d f k that means we are introducing x square inside the integral and for that we adjust this by epsilon s n but we are getting an inequality in between because of the restriction that mod x greater than equals to epsilon s n. So, ultimately this entire integral is nothing but uh, twice epsilon to the power minus 2 into g n epsilon. Now, if you choose 
uh, t is less than equals to 4 by epsilon then it is clear that epsilon to the power minus 2 is into g n epsilon equals to small o of 1 for every epsilon greater than 0. So it is immediately clear that g n epsilon goes to 0 because here we have fixed epsilon as n goes to infinity for every epsilon greater than 0. So it is clear that uh, Fellows condition and, and CLG jointly together they implies Lindbergh's condition and hence the uh, proof of Lindbergh failure CLT is complete. Thus uh, Lindbergh failure CLT uh, is really an important uh, one, important CLT uh, and this really ensures the uh, convergence in distribution of the sum of random variables under some specific conditions. But one important thing that I wish to uh, point out that if you look at the proofs of this theorem and look at the technique of this proof here we have used many times like splitting one event into a particular one, one part of the event and its complement and we deal separately these two parts and then merge these two things to get the final result. So this is a very common technique and here we have used this many times uh, to, to see uh, how it works and uh, incidentally uh, it really works nice and uh, the proof becomes very elegant uh, just by applying this technique. And we have also used the characteristic function because we know that uh, there is one theorem called inversion theorem of characteristic function and also uniqueness uh, property of characteristic function ensures uh, the convergence. So here we have used many things that we have already learned in the measure theory and in probability theory. So this thing we should and, and many things come are coming from real analysis uh, knowledge. Uh, so Lindbergh failure uh, theorem is a very important one that encompasses all sorts of things the techniques the technique is very very useful and we can use this technique in many other uh, problems. So that is the main thing that I want to point out.